are so excited to have Pam Strauss on. She is the co-owner of Lolly Ella Jewelry. Uh, they used to have a shop here in Kiko Harbor, and they have now moved to online, and they are going to be back in Kiko Harbor this weekend having an event on uh, Friday, tomorrow, and Saturday at Sage Green Floral Shop. So she, she is here to join us and tell us a little bit about her business and about that event this weekend. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Pam. Hi, Maddie. Thanks for having me on. We appreciate it. So we're excited about our Lolly Jolly Bash. It's annual for us. Last year had to be canceled, unfortunately, since COVID, but now we're back in business and it's our mega sale and no better time than the last weekend before Christmas to do some Christmas shopping, save big, which is really great. So we're having 30 to 50% off our already amazing prices. So everyone gets really excited about it and it's going to be a two day event rather than just one. So very exciting. And so first, let's go into um, the background of your business. I met you guys and you have a beautiful array of jewelry that you guys sell and make. Um, so first, tell us maybe about the inspiration behind Lolly Ella and then maybe um, a little bit about how you guys went online after closing your store in Kiko Harbor. Sure, yeah. Um, well, we opened La Liella in 2005. Um, it's a family business. I'm the youngest of four girls, which you met me and my sisters there, um, which is a lot of fun. Parents are involved, but La Liella is really special to us because it's actually named after our two grandmas and our great grandma. So Lolly, Stella and Eleanor and their names put together created Lolly Ella. So it was just a wonderful tribute to them. When we opened the store, they were no longer with us, but it was a great way to be able to talk about them and what a big influence they were in our lives. Very strong women and we loved playing with their jewelry. So it was just naturally that we would have to go into jewelry and accessories. And when we opened in 2005, there wasn't many just accessory stores. We had no clothing, nothing like that, no boutique with the extra gift items. It was strictly just jewelry. And we wanted a place that everyone could come in all ages and be able to shop. So something we had something for everyone, young, you know, teenagers, their moms, grandmas, and everyone just enjoyed it. It was a great meeting place. So everyone that walked in our doors became family. Um, but in 2018, we decided to close our bricks and mortar store and completely venture into the online market, which was a definitely a different experience when you're used to working in that retail setting and to shift that mindset. But um, I was concerned I wouldn't be able to have the same, my same creativity that I got to have in the store, but I found um, a whole nother opportunity that just came with being online, which has been great. And even though we set out online, our customers were like, well, we're going to miss seeing you. And I'm like, you're still going to see us because we do pop-ups and events. Uh, and that's just our way of our customers be able to have a touch point with us and be able to have the fun conversations, catch up about family, because we knew everything about all of our customers. Like I said, they became family to us. So our pop-ups and events have been really great. Like I said, you met us at one of them at a uh, country club. So you never know the opportunities that you can meet just being outside of a storefront where we were just always limited before. So. Yeah, it's been a really great transitioning experience into online, and especially now, so much with the COVID that happened, it's important to be online and, you know, yeah. be accessible. To exactly. And um, yeah. also, we were talking a little bit about how moving into online, you guys moved on to online uh, 2018, which was right before right. the pandemic. So you guys maybe got a little bit of a head start with um, something that right. other businesses may have had to deal with during the pandemic moving to online. But how was that transition? And do you guys have a website now or is it mainly social media through Instagram? Um, no, we have a full functioning website. Um, we had one always when we had the store, but I was never able to keep up with it is the demand of having the retail store as I am now. So it's a full fledged functioning website. All of our social media is connected um, to make it even easier. You can shop directly from Instagram, which is lolly underscore Ella or Facebook. And we get so many orders just through our social media, which has been such a great help to help boost sales. Putting everyone every day you, know, you can send emails text messages but when someone's on their social media you see it we'll make sure you had it the ability that you could just click and shop immediately so our process is very quick and smooth for our customers to shop so 
And then you have this event coming up um, tomorrow and Saturday at Sage Green Floral Shop. Can you tell us a little bit about yeah. how you guys got connected with them and what the pop-up shop will look like this weekend for those wanting to go and shop? Sure. Well, we just absolutely love Sage Green Flowers. Erin is absolutely amazing. She's a beautiful floral designer. Um, her shop, like I said, I could just live in the shop. It's so magic. But um, we connected with her earlier this year. We've already done six events with her. She's got a beautiful event space. So she started out a boutique floral shop, very unique, beautiful flowers, does a lot of weddings. And then she expanded into her space next to her and where she can host events and rent space to people. So she does a lot of wedding showers corporate events but then we were able to um, talk to her and meet up with her we did other coordinated events with our local businesses and then we also hosted our own events so tomorrow will be and Saturday will just be us there um, no other local vendors it will be us in Sage Green um, and we'll have the whole side of it and the entire side is going to be filled with jewelry it is normally we can be only limited to one table and the entire side of our store is going to be filled. So it's going to be filled with sparkle bubbles and everything that you need. Perfect time to shop for gifts. Like I said, this is your very last weekend before Christmas to snag the gifts and it's 30 to 50% off. And the best part of our jewelry is it's not seasonal. So you can buy these amazing deals and it's just not a seasonal thing. You're going to be wearing these all year round. So, and, then and this what? also are new arrivals too. New arrivals are also 30% off. So. And then what are some of those new new rivals? I was just going to ask, what are some of the items maybe that you have? Um, if you want to give us a brief, brief overview of those things. Sure. Yeah, so our gold filled jewelry, I'm constantly getting them in. I have tons of brand new rings that just came in. That's been our number one category. Also, our two like top things that we've been selling for gifts is the tennis necklace is definitely having its moment again, even though it's a classic staple piece. You're finding people are liking to incorporate it into their everyday wear, and I am wearing just one now. And then I'll just also the paper clip chain any of the gold filled chain link necklaces these are classics everyone likes it you can add it to anything but mix your pieces mix the tennis necklace with the gold chain is really great um hoop earrings huggy earrings it's all about the ear up in your ear game so multiple piercings are really popular so i'm selling tons of little mini earrings a lot of fun options for everyone like i said the mini studs and hoops Chain links and tennis necklaces are your top four things that have been buying. People have been buying for the holiday season. So, well, thank you so much for joining us this morning, Pam. Thank you so much for having us and have a wonderful holiday.